All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Techie Thursdays. Uh, we're now doing this every Thursday. We're just switching the hours so that you guys can just basically take off after this and have a nice lunch and digest what you're going to get from Next G Awesome Features. So um, today we're going to talk about a feature that, that uh, most service providers do not allow access to their end users. Meaning that if you want to create a conference, you'll have to go dial a number, call someone in and ask them to create a conference bridge, assign a number and do many, many things that could be easily done uh, by our uh, manager portal. Manager portal being the one that your manager at the office or the EIT person uh, will be using to manage your PBX, meaning your next to service. So I have uh, JT here with me today. JT's customer facing tier one support and uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna ask him a question he was not expecting, but I'm pretty sure that um, he, he has a, a good answer for this. JT, how many people call in and ask you for a conference bridge? Um, we have a, a fair amount of people call us in. And they don't know that it's right there in front of them on the portal, but yet they call in 866-NEXTG1, you know, our support team picks up. You pick up the phone and they say, hey, listen, I need a conference bridge. I need to make a conference bridge that holds up to 10 people. I need to have a moderator pin. I have to have a guest pin. And I have, and I want to have a toll-free number for that. Uh, and also, not only a toll-free number, I want to have a Tampa number associated with that so that people locally in Tampa can dial a local number and then join in the conference bridge. So what we're talking about here is basically a conference bridge is, or it's also known as a meet me conference, is a type of conference call where participants dial in a number, they're prompted to enter a pin, that pin is either a moderator or a guest, and yes, you guessed it, a moderator pin is just it's unique, it's one moderator per conference. And then the guest pin is basically for all the attendants. So how this works is you dial a number, prompts you for the pin, you enter your guest pin, and then there are, are several options for that, which we're gonna go through. So what we're gonna look at right now is basically the portal where you as our customer, you as our channel partner can basically create a conference for your customer on the fly. It's as simple as that. All right. So you guys are looking at the portal. This is the manager uh, portal or the IT uh, manager portal for our customers. This is not the end user portal, meaning this is not the portal that I will be using. This is the portal that my IT or my manager here at Nexogy will be using. So I come in and I say, hey, listen, um, I need a conference bridge. You know, I'm doing this uh, call every every Thursday, call it uh, Thursdays. And I need to have a conference bridge where I can have participants dial in a toll-free number. I want them to also be able to dial a number that's in a separate location, in this case in Tampa, for example, and then join the bridge. Not only that, but I want to have controls while in the audio bridge. Good thing that I mentioned audio. This is an audio conferencing, uh, conferencing option that we're talking here about, guys. Okay, so we have a separate Techie Thursday for a more collaborative in a, uh, a more uh, extensive, extensive application that Nexus is rolling out uh, really soon. So, Jay, show me uh, really quick. Let's say, you know, our IT, the IT manager logged in, you know, because I asked him to, I am, actually, I'm asking you, you know, I needed to create me a conference number and I needed to give me a number. In this case, and for the sake of this uh, example, I don't care what number you give me. I just need a DID, you know, a 10 digit number that anybody can dial from anywhere. So run me through the process. So what, obviously after login, you're gonna, what do they do? Well, it's gonna be very simple. You're gonna log in and you're gonna find the conference icon. It's the fourth uh, from left to right on the top. Once you click on that icon, you're gonna have a list of all of the different conference bridges you have uh, with all of the different specific options set for those specific bridges. But to add it as simple as add conference. Uh, so we're gonna name the conference. Um, the customer can choose the name or we could name it- uh, Techie Thursdays. Techie. We're gonna name it Techie. And you have two options if you want to associate the conference bridge with your extension, meaning that you own that bridge. Uh, you're gonna select own. For the most part, 
Uh, the dedicated conference bridge is a standalone extension and it operates without uh, the need of any user's um, extension. So uh, we assign a, an extension number. Uh, the system will tell you if the extension number is being used or if it's not being used. So we're gonna go ahead and select uh, 9,000. Because it has to be a unique extension because anybody that dials it inside the company, it's gonna hit the, the bridge. So it has to be a unique extension. Correct, and, and, and the system is, is, is a, it's pretty uh, smart as far as they'll tell you that extension cannot be used. Nice, it belongs to somebody else. Correct. Use something. So let's select extension 99.9. Now we see we don't have an error message. Uh, we have options whether the leader is gonna require a pin or not. I'm, a, I'm terrible with the numbers, so can you set me up with one, two, one, two, one, two as a pin? Sure, Beautiful. One, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so let's do something for my, uh, for the guests and uh, whatever, um, you know, something that uh, it's easy to remember. Let's do 2121. 2121. Awesome. So now we can set the amount of participants that we want this bridge to have, um, and also the minimum amount of participants that are required before the bridge starts. Now, these options, they're only going to be in effect if you select them on the box. So, Can I ask you something about the max uh, participants? If I live it, if I live it on unlimited, it's because I, I don't mind anybody coming in and listening to what I have to say, right? I don't want to have forty-five people on an audio conference. That's that's crazy. It Unless, is crazy. I mean, I'm doing some sort of a, um, you know, we're a public company and I'm doing, you know, the uh, the uh, um, some sort of an announcement to people and we're gonna mute everybody and I want to talk to uh, forty-five people, right? But if I know that I have ten people in my organization, at a sales group of 10 people, then I would set up 10, right? And so I, this way, nobody, I mean, I, I'm not gonna have anybody else join in without my control. So that, that's where I, I think, uh, am I correct? Is that where you would? Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I would much. definitely limit the, the amount of conference uh, users that can participate. Uh, all of us have been on a conference. We know the echo and the different uh, people that don't mute and you hear car noise and different things like that. So we can definitely limit the participants um, and we also have some options where if, if in the case where people are talking and they forgot to mute their phones, we're, we have some codes that we can provide uh, to mute everybody and, and do those kinds of functions as well. Oh, you mean conference control as well in the conference. We can look at that uh, later. So right. tell me a little bit about the next uh, feature here. Right here, all we have to do is select what options we want the conference to have. So when we call a conference, do we want the, the users to, uh, to prompt their name? Uh, do we want the leader to be required before the users can speak to each other? Uh, and do you want to announce the participant arrival and departure time? Um, it, it can't get any easier than this. Um, it's very difficult. Once you hit save, now we, we have the complete conference ready to go. So you mean that if I dial that extension, that, that conference is gonna be active and anybody that dials in and enters those uh, the, the guest access pin, are able to join the conference, right? That, that's nothing else to do here. It's well, there's one more thing to do. If the customer is going to be calling the conference through a number, then we're going to have to assign a number. Uh, now, that's very easy. We do that in the inventory. You mentioned you wanted an 800 number, correct? Please. All right. So we'll go to the inventory. We're going to filter out. And we're going to look for available numbers. In my inventory, they, these are numbers that our customers own and are, have been allocated to their system. So they're always available as uh, you know, part of my redundancy as an available number for them to uh, point to anything in the system. In this case, we're gonna point it into uh, the conference bridge that we just created. That is correct. Gotcha. So we're gonna go ahead and select, um, we filtered out, we look, we're looking at all available numbers for the customer in this case. And we're going to go ahead and select one of the numbers, uh, it's an 800 number. And we're going to treat this number uh, as a conference and we're gonna send it to the conference bridge that we just created. And the system's going to go ahead and select that. Give me one second here. So it, you could do it a couple of different ways. I like to just simply type in the name that I assigned the conference and um, the system's going to go ahead and provide you with every name that matches. Or the extension. Or the extension, absolutely. It was something like 99. I got it. But for, for, it was nine 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 nine. Yeah, for the for the sake of this uh, example. Okay, perfect. So you you click save, 
And all right, so basically what you're telling me right now is that if we dial that number, that is just gonna prompt me for a moderator or guest pin in order to enter the uh, conference. Correct. All right, perfect. All right, that, that sounds like a plan. All right, so let's say something. Um, now that we have it uh, set up and, and uh, you know, we're gonna, actually we're gonna do one of those uh, quarterly report, company quarterly reports. And so yes, I'm gonna bring in 45 people into my conference. And um, I wanna have a, 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 it's a bridge, but I want everybody muted. Can you quickly share uh, all the features that I have while on the call? Um, I think it's on a, on a separate screen that you wanna? Absolutely. Uh, so once you're in the conference bridge, uh, you have the option uh, to do several different functions. See here, from the top, uh, you can toggle mute, you could start and stop recording, you can check different uh, RX and TX things. Wait a second, you, can you record the conference? You can, absolutely. That's amazing, how much would it be for uh, recording a, a conference? Well, it's gonna be absolutely free. Free? Yeah, it's part of, it's part of uh, what we provide here. Uh, we're able to give you the, these services uh, and we don't, we don't nickel and dime you. All the way. Uh, I see that. Start recording. Stop recording. Uh, in, in the example we made earlier, this this mute option, it, it's it's a must-have for conferences. So here are our tools that that while in a conference, you you could uh, you know, uh, lead the conference the way you did like. Perfect. All right. So so let's go let's go back to the portal again and let's see. Uh, I wanted to check on something else uh, in terms of the uh, conference here. Um, yeah, and also I would like to add that um, I just saw on the portal that the recording feature, you can start recording. You don't have to press, what is it? Uh, it was star 71 and the numbers that you need to remember, not at all. If we were in a conference right now on this same portal, you will see on the lower right side, a little call control. So basically by clicking on a little red button, guess what, you'll start recording. So you will record everybody that's on the bridge and if, uh, obviously if they're muted they won't be able to be recorded but whoever is participating on that audio conference bridge is going to be completely recorded that recorded um conference uh correct me if i'm wrong but it can be downloaded and then distributed right yeah, absolutely and archived so everybody that was on the conference can basically after the conference after the audio conference receive an email with an attachment or download the conference and have it accessible for future reference Absolutely, that is correct. And, and another neat feature uh, that a lot of the customers really like uh, is you can actually see when a conference took place, how many people were in the conference, the amount of time they were in the conference. So if so, you have a conference, you wanna see who took uh, part in your conference, real simple, click the little report, and it's gonna give you every single option that every single conference has been available on that specific uh, bridge. Got it. You got a screenshot there. What you, what you, you want to press the, uh, the report? The report. And so let's select one here. Go to mine. I, I'm pretty sure that I have, uh, just go to uh, page two and go to the last conference pitch. I'm pretty sure I have at least one that I did uh, a couple of uh, days ago, maybe. Okay. So in the report section. Report section here, you will see. You see the, oh, there you go. the conferences that took place, okay. but also you can see the participants. You see the number they called in from, the time, and the duration that they were in the conference. Gotcha. Some useful information uh, that's usually not available. Pretty, pretty simple. Something I would like to add, I know that we have uh, many channel partners, many people that are reselling the XG service here, and I, I, I have a question about, um, these are channel partners that are basically reselling our service and they want to charge for the for, for offering conferencing uh, bridges on a per conference bridge. So even though we do not charge for that, if, if, if they want to charge for that, I'm, I'm fine with it, that, that's okay. The, the answer to the question is yes, you can limit a customer to have X amount of bridges. So you can say, well, you know, I'm going to charge $50 a month per bridge so you can say, well, um, you know, the max amount of bridges that you can allow your customer to create are 10. So this way you can bill for them 150 bucks a month. So that's something, that's another feature that it's not very easily available 
on other uh, service providers. Again, this is a self-provisioning portal. This is a self-provisioning user interface where anybody can just simply log in, create a conference call on the fly, assign a toll-free number or a local DID, meaning a local number, assign moderator, moderator passwords and guest passwords and have that done on the fly. Now, guess what? There's 46 participants right now on this Techie Thursday webinar. And you just showed them the leader pin and the participator pin. Oh what? no. Can you go ahead and change it after the call? Absolutely. Now it's not written in stone, right? No, not at all. I mean, changing it's as simple as highlighting and inserting whatever numbers um, you like to be your pin. And save, and the old one, I assume, it's not working anymore. That is correct. Once you had saved the system, they, uh, that change takes place immediately. That sounds good. All right, I think we've covered a lot. Again, guys, this is an audio conference bridge. This is a very simple and free service to all of, uh, uh, all of our customers. Obviously, if you assign a toll-free number, then there will be toll-free number inbound minutes associated with it. But the toll-free number, you know that that's how it works. It's not related to the conference bridge. It's just that people dialing in will have a, a um, people dialing in will, will count as participants. And for each participant, there are minutes involved into that inbound toll-free number. So that will be the only charge if we were to, if our customer were to choose a toll-free number. You don't have to, but it's nice. It's a nice to have. Now, I, I another thing that I that I noticed is that I, a couple of days ago, I had a conference call and they sent me a number, but that number, I had to dial an extension after the extension. So I dialed a toll-free number and then it prompted me for an extension. I dialed an extension and then I added my participant pin and that's how I got into the conference. So let's say that a customer doesn't want to have, a customer next to you doesn't want to have 10 conference bridges. They just want to have the one that everybody in the company is going to share. So if you remember last week's Techie Thursday when we went through the auto attendant, you see that the auto attendant is very simple to configure. So basically, if you were to do that, you assign that extension that we just created, which is something that started with nine, but I forgot, it's okay. And you click your uh, auto attendant, select the prompt, and then add the conference. What that means is that when you dial a, a, the office number, the main office number, it will say, if you want to join a conference, press one. And after you press one, that's when the system is going to redirect you to that conference bridge. And that's when the customer will enter the pin. The purpose of this uh, short explanation of what, uh, what can be done with a conference through an auto attendant is so that everybody within an organization can share the same um, uh, conference bridge and not have many. So it, it makes it uh, uh, easier, I guess. All right, so I think we went through a lot of stuff here, but very simple. And the, the important word here is, you said that this was how much? Uh, it's free, it's oh, free. included. I keep on forgetting that yeah. everybody's always charging for something, but you know, then again, we don't. So this is a beautiful, a beautiful feature to enjoy since you don't have to pay. And it's something that all businesses uh, these days are requiring for, for, for one reason or the other. Not to be confused with a three-way call, which is something you do on your phone, you do on your cell phone, you do on your next GIP phone, where you put a call and hold and bring a second one. And so there's a, a, a free three-way conference. This is a conference bridge. This is a dial-in number that will prompt you for a guest or a moderator pin so that everybody in the conference can have uh, share their conversation. All right, so do we have any questions because we before we leave, uh, leave everybody uh, uh, for lunch? And I think, where are my questions here? Oh, yes, no, right here, all right. So what do you have, Jay? Can I transfer a call, a leadership moderator to another participant? Transfer a call leadership. Uh, can you change the moderator of the call? Is that the question? I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, well, there's two ways to answer that, but I, I mean, if you're on a conference call and you are the moderator, you want to uh, uh, assign somebody else as a moderator so that they can mute and maybe call control during the call, um, do we have that on the well on the call i don't think that's that's uh that's not a feature while on a conference call if you're already on the bridge there's no way to assign somebody else uh, somebody else as a moderator you can provide the pin they can hang up and dial in again 
using that moderator pin and that way they will become a moderator. How can I assure QoS for our bridges? Are there any additional tips? How can we assure QoS for our bridges? And are there any additional tips? Okay, by QoS, all right, that's a, that's a, that's a uh, not a tough question, but I mean, you know, the conference, our knock, our, our, our service is provided in the cloud with redundant servers uh, across the US. So we, Nexogy, have pretty much, I think we have too much bandwidth for, for, for our, our, the, the customers that we're handling right now. So in terms of QoS, our bridge is not gonna have, uh, it's not gonna reach any capacity in any way and, and in no time soon. If you're dining in within the same company, everybody's dining in that conference and you have a very slow connection, everybody that dials in behind that slow connection or behind the connection is gonna consume bandwidth. So it's basically the same as having 12 people dialing it, you know, using the phone, then dialing the conference. Again, the conference bridge is cloud-based. It's not on-premise, right? So on the Nexigy side, we have enough bandwidth to manage hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, different conference bridges or calls into a conference bridge. But if you're doing it behind, you know, if you're doing an internal call and everybody's dining in, um, then, you know, that'll consume bandwidth. But I, I, I hope I answered the questions. It's just that I, it would have been, other, if it could be more specific, it'll be uh, easier to go through. Uh, can I mute participants during the conference? Yes, you can. You can easily do it by dialing, what is it? Star, star 96 will mute all participants. Star 97 will unmute all participants. Tell me something. If I click on start 96 to mute all the systems, going to prompt me. I mean, it's going to tell me that you're muting all. So I know what's happening, right? Correct. Perfect. All right. And then I click on uh, start 96. I mean, start 97. And it's going to unmute everybody. System's going to tell me everybody's been unmuted. That's correct. Uh, the next question is how do I change the DID callers out to connect to the bridge? Uh, very easy. Uh, you're going to go into the inventory uh, section uh, of the portal. You're going to select the number that you want the caller to dial, and you're going to direct that number with the treatment of conference to the extension that you assign to the conference in the original configuration. So can I have a toll-free number, a Tampa number, a Frankfurt, Germany number, and a San Francisco number pointing to the same conference switch? Sure. You could have as many numbers as, as you need to, to make that conference uh, work. Awesome. Okay. Next question is, how can... Can you show us again how to set up the recording uh, for all conferences? All right, yeah, there's there's two ways to do that. Um, for the sake of, okay, yeah, we can quickly show how to do it. Um, why don't you uh, go back to the portal. What I'll do is, I can try and what I'm gonna do is, uh, I wanna show them the call control that it's not necessarily particular to a conference call, but it's also particular to any call that you make. So you see that, that that red button right there? If this were a conference bridge, you see that I dialed, it says conference bridge. The moment you click on that button, that conference call is gonna be recorded. As simple as that. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the easiest uh, way to do it. Why the easiest? Because you have it in front of you. The other way that we describe is that while the conference call, you press star 71, and the call will start recording. Star 73, you stop the recording. You have more questions like this? That's the next question. Okay. Is the conference call server so we can see it again? You use it in Spanish, thank you. We can definitely set up prompts in Spanish, yes. The conference, uh, the conference server is cloud-based. Uh, it's located in redundant facilities across the U.S., so there's not a server to see. It's cloud-based. Obviously, if you were to go to one of our uh, co-location facilities, you can see the actual server. Uh, I hope that's not something you need, so <laughs> but that's the answer to that. Okay. Uh, do you have it in Spanish? Yes, we have it in Spanish. You can uh, set up the prompts in Spanish for sure. There are knowledge-based article for the star codes for the conference specifically. Yes, yes. Those, those star codes are going to be available 
on our uh, knowledge base. If you go to Nexigy, www.nexigy.com, on the upper right corner, click on support, go to knowledge base, and those will be posted uh, really soon. Okay. And, and the last question here, sorry, I meant saved. Um, if you could submit that question again. If that means that the uh, call recordings are going to be saved, yes, they will be saved. Uh, I think we just did a very quick call. I don't know if that, that's going to show because it was, it was a very small call to be recorded. But if you click on the call history and check on that number that I, uh, the conference bridge that I just dialed. Or for that matter, let's take a look at something really quick. For that matter, what we can do is go to that call history and any call that's basically recorded, right? Let's go to our domain here. In the call history, let's see. Yeah, that's it right there. So you see this icon right here? It says no recording because it, it was uh, too short of a call to start recording. But this one right here from somebody else was, was recorded. So it's safe and you can download it from right there. Do you have any other questions? We do. And I guess we're done. All right, guys, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, another free feature uh, feature from Nexigy. Not only a free feature, but a self-provisioning feature that you don't uh, have to dial in. Uh, call our tech support team or our customer service team. Um, so you basically leave a uh, J team with not much to do. But then again, that's the purpose, you know, so that we can really troubleshoot your, your, your uh, when you have issues, is uh, all these features that are free are self-provisioned by our customers. When you, once you learn how to do it, I guess that's it. You never have to call us again. You can do it on the fly. This portal is very accessible through um, tablets and uh, obviously iOS and Android. And so the nice thing is that, you know, you can just change pins on the fly. So what we're looking at right now, it's another in a separate um, Techie Thursday or we're gonna go through and it'll be announced. Nexigy Teams is our, our, our approach to a more collaborative application by which not only you can access uh, a, a bridge by dialing a number, but it's also for web meetings, screen sharing, file sharing, and team chat. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Teams, this is basically our version, which I guess it's a little bit, it's, it, it's got uh, more features than, um, than the most that you see out there, and it's coming uh, really soon for a very, very low price. So guys, again, thank you very much for taking your time. Have a nice lunch and we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you and goodbye.